Alone in the Dark is a series that has had a troubled and convoluted history, as we've seen playing through all the games. Uh, but now, possibly, possibly a revival, possibly a bright spot, as Alone in the Dark has come out in the year 2024. Now, of course, we have to keep expectations in check. But at the same time, we can always at least say, hey, at least this is not Alone in the Dark on the Wii. You know? There's that. Look, whatever, whatever this turns out to be, there's at least that. But enough about the past. Let's talk about the present. Let's talk about the new Alone in the Dark game, which is sort of a remake of the first one. I say sort of because it does have the same main characters. It does have the same uh, house, Dersetto. Um, and it does have the same basic plot line, which is that Emily wants to go find her, uh, her uncle, Jeremy. Well, in the first game, Jeremy Hartwood killed himself. And she was actually going to the house to look at his piano. You know, that was actually the driving force in the first game. But in this one, it appears that Jeremy is still alive. Uh, Emily wants to go find him and has hired uh, Edward Carnby to escort her to Dersetto. So, it's a bit different in that it seems like it's a larger game. The house is bigger. There's more areas. There's actually people to talk to in the house. Uh, so I, w I don't know if I will say that this is a remake of the first game. Rather, this is a reimagining, let's say. Let's say that. Let's call it that. I guess let's get started and see what kind of re a reimagining it is. Now, if you're wondering, this is the PlayStation 5 version of the game. Um, and also, if you are wondering, this game does star a couple of known actors for the roles of Carnby and uh, and Hartwood, uh, who do both the VA and also um, scanned their, their images, their likenesses, to be used for the characters. But we won't know about any of that. We're not going to see about any of that, because what we are going to be seeing are the Dersetto 1992 skins uh, of the characters we know in this game. Because, I mean, who are these new people? I don't know who these new people are. We want our we want our original Carnby and Emily. So that's that's who we're using. Let's get started. Okay, so difficulty, easy. You could take it easy and focus more on the story if you want. Then standard, there's the standard experience with its intended difficulty. And then there's hard for an extra challenge. Monsters are harder and resources are scarce. We'll go with normal as we do. Difficulty guidance. There's modern, extra help provided to make the experience smoother and easier, including hints and helpful highlights. There's old school. For those who want to figure out everything for themselves, no extra systems to guide the player. I am kind of curious as to what that means. And we did play those those DOS Alone in the Dark games. Why don't we get, why don't we, at least for, for the start, try old school and see what this is supposed to mean. What's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him. Watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course. But I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? 
No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. But Jeremy didn't kill himself. Is that why he's at your setup? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis, figuring he might stumble upon some cure. You mentioned the letter. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to get him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Here we are. My uncle's not well, Mr. Carnby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part in this? You couldn't get a cab? I just wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What exactly are we going to do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first. Oh, Carnby wearing his gun on the outside of his jacket. Just to let everyone know it's there. All right, so we can choose our character just like the first game. Now, we will end up playing as both of them because apparently uh, there are some differences in the cutscenes based on which character you're using. Like the main game and the main progression I don't think is different, but I do think that there are differences in how the cutscenes are presented. So there is Emily, played, played by Jodie Comer. And Edward Carnby, played by David Harbour. And of course, we've been playing as Carnby all this time, so we'll do our first playthrough as Ol' Ed. Oh, Emily transformed. Hello? Hello? Looks abandoned. It can't be. There has to be someone around. Wait here. I'll go around back. I guess that signals that Emily is now an NPC, like everyone else. Only the protagonist may get to have the get to have this character model. All right, chapter one. Mm-hmm. Looking good. You want to wear your best green tuxedo when you're going to Dersetto. You got to find a way inside the house. Ads for rifles. An engine hanging up here. Oh, there's a car. Someone fancies themselves a, me themselves a mechanic. I mean, I guess you're not going to get a mechanic to come out here. It seems pretty solitary. So yeah, in this version of the game, it seems that Dersetto is perhaps some sort of uh, mental clinic or institute. Instead of just being an old mansion. It's so, too dark in here. I can't see anything. Do we have a flashed light, maybe? I thought it was going to like bring up a prompt on the screen saying press something for flashlight. Uh, well, let's see what our buttons do. We can aim. Get, get like a zoom in on the view. We can crouch, sneak around a little bit. Does not appear. 
does not seem like we have a flashlight, so maybe we can find one around. I mean, there is a big light right here. I can't just take pick that up and take it with me, though. So apparently this Dursetto is run by a Dr. Gray. Ah, there is a, indeed a prompt on that. Was that there the first time I came in here? Or did it appear now? Oh, got here. Oh, it goes on our jacket. That's how you know. That's how you know it's a survival horror game. It goes on the jacket. Okay, now we get the prompt to say how we turn the light on and off. Hopefully, it's just a regular light and not like one of the kinds that needs constant batteries. It's not mentioning anything about batteries. Lock door. Use that key. That is a that's a very modern Resident Evil view of that key opening that door. Right, Sir Gersetto, while it was a mansion in the original game, was not that large of a house. At least when you're talking- I'm not getting in there. No way. At least not when we're uh, talking about being the setting for an entire game. And Alone in the Dark 1 was a very short game if you knew what to do. Just figuring that out. That took all the time. Hmm. hmm. Something down there. Well, we're not going to jump down there to get it ourselves. We are technically trespassing right now. Hmm? Whoa at what? The big tree? I mean, yes, it's a very big tree. It's one big tree defends the conservatory. I mean, I don't I don't assume I assume they grew it in here. I don't think they just like moved it in from outside. Yeah, Emily's standing on the front at by the front door knocking. What? While we enter through the back and like we're not supposed to be here. But uh Carnby doesn't let those rules get in his way. Hmm. Should I shoot that? Did not knock it down. I, well, we had to know. Had to find out. Hmm. And I appear to be stuck. Can't seem to move. That's a good, it's a promising start. Yeah, I think, I don't, I think I'm stuck on the bucket, maybe. Oh, there we go. So he has, like, a lunge. Let's, uh, we should see how this lunge works. I was able to get out of that with the lunge. Okay. Let's try out this lunge. Forward. Backwards. Okay, he can't do it backwards. Okay, he kind of does. Yeah, he turns around when he does it. Kind of like... Kind of look, looks like he's charging headfirst a little bit, but I assume it's... I assume he uses it to get out of the way and not like to headbutt anything. Who knows? Maybe he does. I need the key. We need... Well, you know what he needs. You know. Hopefully no one inside is worried about hearing a gunshot going off in the greenhouse. Uh, maybe not. They just have bullets lying around, so maybe they're used to it. Can I go up that? No, I guess not. 
Well, these doors don't have prompts. Does not seem like we can open them. We need a key to get through that one door. That can that that bird that bird cage is conspicuous. I mean, we're given bullets. Maybe I really am just supposed to shoot it down. I did shoot the cage. Maybe I need to shoot the chain. That's a tough bird cage. Oh wait, something over here. Okay, never mind. There's just a key lying here in this pot. Never mind. The housekeeper's key. That's where the housekeeper keeps her key. Housekeeper walks out right now, sees Karn be unloading bullets into this bird cage. Look, he's a detective. He knows what he's doing. He's been in many situations where keys were hidden in bird cages. Don't underestimate don't underestimate this man's powers of deduction. All right, now I got to get to the front door. Don't mind if I do. All right, we're taking their liquor. I'm glad to know that uh, that the reptile is alive and well. Go into the kitchen. What's this one? Bullets. And a Bible. This really does take place in America. Every day your silence weighs a little heavier. It's been a difficult year for everyone and many have lost all hope. I read in the papers about people suffering. Pictures of dust-covered landscapes without a drop of water. I wish I knew if you were still tending the earth or if you had turned your back against us. I have started to look for help elsewhere. I pray you will tell me if I am going down a path that you find disagreeable. With help from Batiste and Charlotte, I found comfort in the practice of the voodoo. I have long been skeptical of that Caribbean cult, but it's been of good use to me. It seems all harmless in my book. I say some words dreamt up by the Creoles, and I carry around a small pocket of gris, gris Nothing of this is mentioned in the Bible, of course, but the French quarter priestess tells me it's all connected. She says the Christian God is just one more perspective on the creator of things. That's what I like to think, but the other way around. That the spirits of her faith are just aspects of you, our Heavenly Father. I am so grateful for the words you gave Mr. Hartwood. We will sing your praises at St. John's Eve. The world will be blessed soon again. Only the sacrifices of the Old Testament compare to your demands. Let it be the truth. A mother of earth, wood, and dirt. A mother of a thousand young. Sacred sand, one dollar. Black cat oil, dollar fifty. Devil shoe strings, a quarter. That makes two dollars and seventy-five cents, madame. What was that you were telling the doctor? A goat without horns. What does that mean? Ah, you must have misheard me, madam. I said no such thing. Please. I know I don't look like any of you, but I'm devout. I'm ready to do what it takes. Mm, do not be so eager to sacrifice the few things you have left, madam. Now please, leave my store. A goat without horns. Go without horns, you say. It doesn't say who this is. Um, but someone's taken up the voodoo. They're really eager about it. You know, Christianity just doesn't have the spice it used to. It doesn't have the verve.
Rat poison. Lagniappa. Poison squeal no more. Rat and vermin killer. <laughs> what was that? Non-essential that we can find throughout the game. Completing sets will uncover forbidden knowledge. And sometimes even more. So maybe I won't use this for anything? They carry over from game to game. Some sets can't be completed without playing both campaigns. Okay, so they're like collections of items. Uh, we I guess we don't do anything with them, but they're saying that maybe it would be in our best interest to try to complete the sets. Drink. Do we, can we look up what we have? Uh, let me see something here. Like this is, this is when you press start. Do we have like an inventory screen? Okay, there we go. Here's our license. Louisiana State Board, private investigator examiners. He's licensed. Like, don't think he's not. He's not just some, you know, not some faker just pretending that he's a, a bona fide uh, PI. He has his license. Conby, why am I hearing from Gloria Allen that you got some job at the loony bin? Yeah, I better not think be thinking of paying her off before me. I don't want to take you for a ride, so get me my money. I'll be at the Maccabean all night if you score some dough. Obed Morton. Oh, yeah, that... That it... We've heard that name, haven't we? That was Carnby's friend from New Nightmare, wasn't it? The friend who died before the game started and Carnby goes to the island to fit to solve the mystery of how his friend died that i believe that was the name now of course this is not that carnby because that carnby uh was not connected to original carnby it's a different person altogether a carnby why am i hearing from gloria allen that you got some job at the loony bin you better not be thinking of paying her off before me i don't want to take you for a ride so get me my money I'll be at the Maccabean all night if you score some dough. Oh, bad Morton. All right, so Carnby needs the money. He has to take it any job he can find. Lagniaps. Okay, it's 15 sets. We got Vagabonds, Goat Without Horns, Great Depression. Okay, so Great Depression um, represents forbidden knowledge, and Rat Poison is one of them. We got a syringe as one of them. I don't know what that third one is. Oh, this one unlocks the shotgun cabinet. Ooh, pirates. Oh, there we go. I guess I can turn that off. It's, it's lit well enough in here. Yeah, let's close that. Just don't leave it the stove open like that. Well, I mean, it's fit. the kitchen is dirty in some places, but in other places, it looks like it's being actively used. It looks like some nice loaves of bread here. Some meat being chopped. And the bullets being stored. What about in the icebox? Bullets. What else would you... You gotta keep them cold. Not many people know that. You gotta keep your bullets cold. Right, and yeah, we were just in there. Right. 
Got a laundry room. It looks like it might be connected to a door to the least to the outside. But that's not the front door, is it? Oh, no, it leads here. Okay. Well, we unlock that. Just the kitchen again. Oh, this was that bedroom. Or is it, was this a different bedroom? Because we hadn't been in the la laundry room. Anyway. There are keys hanging there. We can see them keys. You can't take any of the keys. Anything else in here we should be looking for? Doesn't seem like it. Just gotta make sure that no circular prompt appears when I walk by this. Such tempting keys. Yeah, well, there, I don't think there'd be anything new in here. He sounds like he's panting a little bit. Do we have like a stamina meter when it comes to running? Just yellow. How did they know? That's my... That's the tastiest color. Each 100 grams of yellow peach, peach flesh. Four grams higher than ordinary something. We got salmon. Great canned food. I'm glad they buy their peach flesh in bulk. I'm gonna need it to have enough of that to feed this place. Streetcar ticket for Paul Waits. This is for the Crescent City, which is forbidden. I don't know what's forbidden about this knowledge. I don't know how having his streetcar ticket is really all... Lemon! Delicious lemon. One gram of protein per 100 grams of, of lemons. Carbon hydrated, six... Point oh grams and uh, something grams. It can provide. I can. I'm not sure what it says after that. Lemon juice vi is rich in vitamin B1. But I can read this. Canned peaches are delicious. Yellow peaches contain a lot of vitamins. They have rich nutritional value. They can be del eaten directly on a cake or a cookie. Mm-mm. It's true. Never tried eating a peach on a cookie. Maybe I should try that. I need the key. I need the key. I didn't see any keys in here. All we saw were cans of peaches and lemons. And bullets. Don't forget the bullets. Wonder if Emily's still knocking on that door. Sabotage. Please do not touch the boiler. It is working after all. While the sabotage has caused a leak, only the decorative plate has been completely ruined. Let's wait for Mr. Chance to turn up and he can take a look at the leak. 
Mr. Waits. Mr. Chance, you say? Well, Mr. Waits is the one who had the ticket that we picked up. Seems to suggest that maybe there is some sort of sabotage of the facilities? Well, why would someone do that? That doesn't look safe. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's, that's a puzzle on this boiler. But before we look at that... Okay, I, okay so I, I just can't walk past that. The steam is too hot, and I can't... I can't, like, crawl under it, because I would ruin Carnby's nice green suit, and he's not going to do that. All right. Okay, I guess I need an invent uh, an inventory item to fill that in. Can't seem like does not seem like I can do something with it right now. All right, heading upstairs. Maybe we can get to that uh that front door. Opa's a magazine of literature and fine arts. Carnby's not that interested in either of those subjects. Marvelous science. A weekly review of progress in industry, science, invention, and mechanics. Books are obsolete, they say. Who, who, who reads books anymore? It's been replaced by the magazine, by the monthly periodical. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, like, a, a, like, look, it's not a reflection, but it's sort of like, you know what's supposed to be there. Let's just move on. Look, we all know reflections are hard. Ooh, a map. Floor plans. All right. And a key. And... Well, this is not a key to a box. What does it say on that? Medicine delivery for Cassandra Beauregard is what that said. The Kingfisher. What does that say? Uh, can't. Hard to read that text. America's biggest ornithologicus magazine, packed with over three hundred illustrations. Are well, you looking at? Like looking at pictures, looking at drawings of birds? This is the magazine for you. And who doesn't? Ooh, a diary. Sunday, June 22nd. I spent all day looking for Jeremy. I should have cared for the others, but I'm scared that he will do something irreversible. Cassandra is upset that I didn't give her the latest shipment of pain medication that Waits brought from the post office yesterday. I would have given it to her, but the company didn't send a new key this time around, so the box is just sitting there on my desk. They must have figured we had plenty of their gimmicky keys by now. I only remember seeing one lately. Grace was playing with it inside the grand parlor. Unless it turns up by itself, it will have to wait. I have to figure out where Jeremy is. I think Jack knew something. That dog of his found a strange rot permeating the house. She's showing us, he said. 
like those blots and streaks of fetid rot was talking to him. All right, so the box contains pain medication, and Grace might have the key to the box. You know, I know it's a video game, but I do like the idea that Karn B has just walked into this house and has begun robbing it of all of its booze, bullets, and he's taking everyone's diaries. He doesn't actually have a reason to do any of this as of yet. He will, I'm sure. But nothing's really hap- nothing has happened yet. What is that? I can open the map. Oh, I hold this to open the map. There we go. Well, first I want to see- oh, that's a, that's a glass. Locked doors and unsolved puzzles. Hmm. I need the key. Yeah, we need the library key. This looks like it might be a front hall. Maybe connecting to a front door. I mean, we could just look at this map to see if that's the case, but where's the excitement in that? A clue. The Great Depression. President Hoover raises tariffs on over 20,000 imported goods in an act to protect American labor. Following the collapse of the Wall Street stock market on October 24 last year, American industry has suffered greatly. Thousands of companies have gone bankrupt and left a large part of the American workforce unemployed. In an attempt to turn the tide, the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act has been signed by President Herbert Hoover. By regulating commerce with foreign countries, the government hopes to encourage the industries of the United States to compete with cheap foreign imports. Superstition on rise. New Orleans voodoo stores and spiritual mediums see increased profit during troubled times. While the market has faced hard times ever since Black Thursday of last year, voodoo doctors and snake charmers see significant rise in number of customers. With the coming eve of St. John on the 23rd, the police expect increased cult activity around Bayou St. John, the southern shore of Lake Pontchartrain. Voodoo rituals in that area on the eve of St. John have a long tradition reaching back to the first snake worshippers brought as slaves from West Africa. During the 19th century, its practice was popularized by the legendary Marie Laveau and has since been embraced by many of the Creoles and the surviving aristocracy of the French Quarter. Author Seeks Asylum Rumors regarding author Cassandra Beauregard making Dorsetto her home verified. Dorsetto Hospital is an old plantation building on the eastern shores of Lake Pontchartrain. While often considered an asylum for the insane, residing Dr. Elmore Lee Gray prefers to think of it as a convalescent home, a place where you can go to rest. The patient list is kept secret, but thought to include many of the black sheep of wealthy families, because at Dorsetto, treatment does not come for free. Local author Cassandra Beauregard has now been confirmed by her own admission. She's been lauded as a powerful Creole voice and written many successful books. Lately it was reported from Hollywood that she has finished a moving picture manuscript titled Slaughter Gulch. That film is set to hit the theaters next year. All right, so Cassandra is the one who was angry that she was not getting her pain meds. Uh, also, I approve that the, the news article is being read like this. As he just finished the manuscript for a moving picture. One of them new fangled things. Rubber stamp. This is part of Lost Children. I wonder if there will be, like, a theme to the items, because I see a stamp. There's then what appears to be a dog collar, and then the third one is, I'm assuming, a fountain pen. So what's the connection there? 
Ding ding. I need the key. I need the key. Because no one's answering. Indigo and Perique Plantation Dursetto, Harriet Pickford, 1847. Arrival of Union Captain J.W. Norton. Oh, yeah, and the house burning down. So is, are those elements of the Dursetto history? Are those uh, still canon? Can't open that door. It appears that would lead to the doctor's office. We can't get in there. And then that would lead to the clerk's office. We could go upstairs. Nope, not that. Did we try stair hall? I need the key for that. I need the key. I need the key. Um, so we could try upstairs. Emily's waiting for a while. Surprised she's just not breaking a window by now. Oh, no, there she is. What are you doing? Who are you? Whoa, pardon me, excuse me. My name is Edward Carnby, private investigator. I hope you don't mind we let ourselves inside. I do mind. This is private property. You can't just barge in here. I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. It's urgent, and no one was answering the door. We can't hear you knocking anymore. None of us can. Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy. Am I right? She has that Hartwood gloom, doesn't she? That's right. I'm Emily Hartwood. I just came to make sure my uncle is all right. Well, he is unavailable right now. He will have to come back another day. Unavailable? How? Is he sleeping? We can wait. He's lost. Don't I know you from somewhere? Who's your man again, Miss Hartwood? My name's Edward Carnby. Private investigator. Splendid. Enough, all of you. Get back to your rooms. The coffee, keep your eyes on the child. And you two, please leave immediately. Look, we're not here to cause any trouble. Just let us see the old man, satisfy the curiosity of my client here, and we'll be off. Jeremy has gone missing. There's no need to worry, but it might be some time before he turns up. The whole staff is looking for him. What? He ran off? I don't have time for any of this. Please, come back tomorrow. All right, in that case, we'll just wait in his room. You don't mind, do you? It's upstairs, right? Wait, you can't. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. In the corridor, it's the first door on your left. I'll tell Dr. Gray you're here. Excellent, thank you, madam. Look around, see if we can dig up any clues. I like when Carnby first said that, introduced himself and said that he's a private detective. He didn't sound like he believed it. But all right, now everyone knows we're here. I don't know what she, the housekeeper means, come back another day. It doesn't seem like this place is close by to anywhere. 
where are we going to go to spend the night? There's like a, a dialogue thing hanging in the air. Should I, I mean, I guess I'll press the button when I've looked at other things. Com the commonplace book, it's a clue. Every night the dark man stands opaque at the threshold of my room, counting the days until my spirit spills out of my tired shape. Only his pallid mask shelters my remaining sanity, staring directly into the face of that demonic sultan would surely sunder time itself. Would he have looked the same to my father as he struggled for his life? Does his veiled face haunt my niece quite the same way? I wish so that I could rest my soul in that sunburnt convent of Tarawea. Would I find you there, Juan? Or Signora Pirosi, back from the beyond? Every night I hide from him, moving from one misshapen memory to another. Seems conjured out of fantasy and delirium. Places I struggle to even paint. I wish I understood your death, Signora. Is there anything I could do for you but bury you in that bleak necropolis? That triumphant chapel rising above the ledges and the oven vaults shall be your sepulchre where you may rest, and I shall weep. How did you first come to understand such things, Signora? How did you know that the battered boil in the basement would lead me to Lafayette Cemetery? Or how the old upstairs clock with its astronomical motifs would take me to that hateful mound outside of Claremont Harbor? Those are my memories, my past. Is there perhaps a chance, if ever so small, for me to see Tarawaya? Oh, I want that more than anything. Please, let my talisman take me there. Let me sit with Juan under his Bodhi tree. Despite having sold me that talisman, Miss Jackson, the voodoo priestess, revealed none of her secrets to me. That's why I had to travel to Tonka. Instead, she cruelly told Baptiste, my caretaker, that he would be betrayed and killed in the most awful way, that the one he loved would pierce his thigh with a sharp spear, and that he would be devoured by his own mother. What a terrible thing to say. The people of Deseto were becoming dangerous. They do not understand what they are doing. I must do something to stop them. I tried talking to Dr. Gray, but he confuses my worries. He's caught up in treating me. How can he expect evil to be cured with medicine and conversation? The orderlies, the housekeeper, and the patients are all deranged. They will call upon evil to enter this world. All oh, will be lost. Everything. Unless I can find the clerk, Mr. Waite. He seems to be a clear-thinking man. Maybe Beauregard. The dark man offered me a prison and I accepted. I signed that miscarried contract and entered a dark pact. Everyone is safe, except for me. Nothing on this one. Well, Jeremy seemed quite frustrated that all the doctor wants to do is therapy, but I mean, what did Jeremy expect? Like, I don't know why he would have come here to talk to the doctor about fighting the forces of darkness that are seeping through the edges of the world. It's not, it's not really the specialty, you know, of, of Dr. Gray, I would imagine. We got a painted tile. The motif suggests that this is a part of a larger picture. But it sounds like Jeremy made a deal with the dark one. And now he has to go away. But he says that everyone else is going to be safe. Or at least that's what he believes. Oh, are we got, do we got a sliding tile puzzle? We love those, don't we? I mean, it can't be sliding tile. There's no empty space. 
Okay, it's just replace the tiles. Like, that's a lot easier than sliding tiles. Hey, you know anything about this? Looks like some sort of talisman. No, I don't. Oh, help me out here, will you? I would kill the guy, throw some of this stuff out. I'd be crazy too if I had this much junk lying around. Save this one. All right, come on. I want to go see Dr. Gray. I like Karn B's constantly open triangle Let's mouth. Go. Yeah, I'm coming. Emily, are we assuming Jeremy's dead? Because you just took that painting out of its frame and you're taking it with you. Miss Hartwood. Emily? Investigate the corner store. Well, that seems odd. We saw the outside of Dersetto before. It wasn't part of a town. Maybe we just missed it. Yeah, we still don't have the key for that. I do have a gun if we need it. it. Looks like we need it. Takes a little while to reload. He's re oh, he's he's putting all the bullets back in. to be stuck again. Am I stuck on the guy? Okay, there we go. It's happened twice now. Seems like it's kind of easy to happen. Fortunately, our little dodge here can get us out of it, but it takes a few times. Can't go that way. What the hell is going on? Maybe we should read the daily bulletin to find out. Items can be thrown to the enemies to distract them. Tap R2 to quickly throw, but hold R2 to aim. Oh, that, that's I guess that's wasting it, but like we should remember we can do that. We're hiring longshoremen, pay two dollars a day to operate a crane. We 
can see. Yes, I have been sprinting. Click the L stick down to do it, which I never like doing. I never thought using... Oh, I'm full up on drinks. Uh, okay. Gulp, gulp, gulp. I never thought holding down the stick to run felt good. I mean, I guess I've gotten used to it over the years, but I've never really liked it. I can't go that way. No, surely I can. Actually, what hap- Oh. I have to say, what happens if I do? Uh, invisible wall is what happens. I mean, well, he told us. He told us we cannot go that way, and he was correct. Johnny the Conqueror. I mean, this is all lit up real nice and golden, so why don't we go in? Ding, ding. The biggest covered market in Louisiana with the best food from farmers in the state. Baseball game. New Orleans Pelicans versus the Memphis Turtles at Pelican Stadium. Buy tickets in the booth outside the stadium. Ticket, uh... Ticket release starting second. Ticket price, 35 cents. Children under 12 accompanied by an adult for free. Hay wagon for sale. Need an experienced baby. Did people do this sort of, uh, like that kind of notice? back then, where they would, like, cut the slips at the bottom of the paper, then you would tear them off. Yeah, that's what that is right there. If you need an experienced babysitter, pull the slip off. Uh, wanted gardener. Let's see what Johnny has to say. Ah, Colbert. They're not the good guy. Are you... Is this your store? There are no owners here. We both strangers in Jeremy's store. Jeremy did this? How? The pack with the dog, man. Jeremy warned us, but we didn't think much of it. I'm Detective Edward Carnby. I was hired by Jeremy's niece to find him. Oh, yeah? How much you paying you? $150. <laughs> She's sure getting her money's worth to die. Are you a thinking man, compare? No, nah, not if I can help it. You know, I think Jeremy's hiding in a way we can't find him. He has this juju necklace that guides him. The talisman? That's right. It's some magic charm he got for Miss Jackson down the street. The voodoo priestess? You know surprising things, compare. Yeah. The Mama Loa. Here, take the key. I locked the gate to save her place from all the ghouls and goblins getting inside. Maybe if you go there, you can find some clues to show you the way. Thanks. I'll have a look. All right. We got that key. Oh, that many keys. Multiple. Three keys. One opens up to Miss Jackson's place in the French Quarter. Then there are two belonging to Dorsetto. One for the clerk's office, one for the library. And this is a preserved reptile. Which, uh, that's part of a goat without horns. That's part of that set. So do you sell anything? You want to come along? Nah, I'm going to stay here for a while. I'm just looking through your trunk, don't worry about it. I don't know if he's able to do that when we're in the house, but ever since we came outside, he has the ability to just bust the door open like that. Oh, that okay, that was slow that time. 
but he can charge through a door. Hold on. My map is of no use here. Pipe? Why not? Okay. Okay, there we go. Tap R1, hold R1. My weapon broke! Ah, I see. I have to say, okay, well that's good, we don't have to use bullets. Uh, but... We do have durability. I don't know why we can do that. But we can. Alright, uh... Okay, uh, items to throw. Maybe let's do that successfully this time. Got the Daily Post. The flyer title, Alcohol Band. So, where should I throw? Huh. Whoa! Uh, he saw me. Now, here we go. Now, he's still coming. I don't know if throwing these things now would do anything. They, they see me. It's not like I'm going to trick them. Oh. Can I work my way past you, please? Okay. Considering how many throwables there are, I assume this is actually a stealth section. Didn't really turn out that way. It's Miss Jackson's seance parlor. Let's see if she's got any information on Jeremy's talisman. Let's see if let's see if he does. It's the talisman, like the one in the painting. We'll just take that with us. An old talisman shaped over centuries. The engraving of the numbers looks to be less than 100 years old, but the base could be from antiquity. The polished black sunstone in the middle has a glass finish and occasionally gives the impression of hiding a picture within itself. Yep. We can't turn it around. I guess it's just a 2D image and nothing more. I think it's meant for the talisman. All right, let's put it on there. Okay, now we can interact with it. I think it needs numbers, like coordinates. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. We could look at those notes, yes. Well, first, let's take a look around. Not letting me interact with the door. I mean, it says it needs a key, but... Alright, so Jeremy's... Jeremy's notes. And let's see, I assume we're... Looking for that last page. Talisman plates. So let's see, the numbers... Uh, I think that's eight on the inner ring, five on the middle ring, and three on the outer. Let me just make a note for myself. So 
So that looks like eight inner, five middle, three outer. There are always, always three numbers. Always three. Uh, the other images here maybe are not relevant to us right now. Okay, so let's see. Okay, here's the inner. Thing moves like that. Actually, let me look at that again. Showing something. A place? Where is that? Huh. Well, I guess it was a painting in the mansion. And that's how it's done, see? No problem. Well, okay, I, d I don't know. I don't know how that happened. No idea. Detective, I was wondering when you were going to show up. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. I understand you are working for Jeremy Hartwood's niece. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're not wrong. We came here for her uncle. I just didn't expect... I didn't expect this. You are Dr. Gray, right? That's right. You don't happen to have some identification, Detective. I'm not keen on having strangers prying into my business. Oh, Detective Edward Carnby, Decatur Street, New Orleans. Enjoying the view carré, Detective? Those old French quarters, the voodoo people, the gangsters. I'm sure you live an exciting life. Well, that's not quite like the stories, Doc. Just trying to make a living. Aren't we all making a living? Well, welcome to Dossetto, Detective. I hope your time here will be useful. Now, what can I do for you? Why don't you tell me where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? <laughs> Why wouldn't that make for a short visit? I wish I could tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know. A drink, Detective? Anything brandy. Oh, you do belong in the French quarters, Detective. Armagnac or cognac? You know, just give me the cheap stuff. I'm not much of a connoisseur. Having low standards is not a virtue, detective. Let me see if I can broaden your perspective. What can you tell me about Jeremy? I wouldn't want to go into details about his condition. Doctor-patient confidentiality. I'm sure you understand. Sure. But he is crazy. And he's gone missing. Why? Here, try this. Ooh, it's good. Got a bite? <laughs> it's called a sidecar. The trick is not to be afraid of the tartness of the lemon. Then for goodness sake, don't overdo the triple sec. Okay, what can you tell me about Jeremy? Ah, well, let me think. He is an anxious man, constantly worried about events not presenting themselves according to his model of predestination. He complains about things not being carried out in the right order and that something simply shouldn't be. Is any of this helpful to you? Uh, not really. Uh, I was hoping for some direction where to look next. I'm sorry. I have nothing for you then. You should talk to my orderlies. They have been looking for him for a while. Now, I'm sure they would appreciate your help. Yeah, I ran into Batiste earlier. 
Come to think of it, he... He might have given me a lead. Oh, excellent. So your investigation is already underway. I'm gonna go. But I'm sure we'll meet again. Looking forward to it. Safe returns. All right, chapter one is over. Carnby not getting the information that he really wanted. Detective Carnby, how did you... Where did you go? I was just talking to Dr. Gray. You disappeared. No, it's not what you think. Have you... Have you found anything strange going on here? Yes. Everyone is being incredibly evasive and I can't figure out why. No, I mean something you can't explain. Paranormal, even. Detective, I really need you to get yourself together. I can't do this alone. Forget it. I'll figure it out. Do you want to come see Dr. Gray? No. I want to, I want to try something else. With his talisman, I think I can follow Jeremy to the place he mentioned in the book. What was the name? Do you remember something Spanish? T Teroea. Yeah, that's where I need to go. Detective, are you gonna be all right? Yeah, of course. Go talk to Dr. Gray, we'll rendezvous later. Well, we're splitting up again and this not talisman brought me back from the French quarter in the blink of an eye if Jeremy can travel so easily then he could be hiding anywhere even Teroea if he can do it so can I I just need to figure out how the talisman works well the two of them split up again already and not a surprise because now Karen B's gone from thinking we have to find uh this guy who is having the mental issues and he's gone from that to oh shit magic um i have i have the magic talisman that can teleport me to other places where the monsters are uh and i need to use that to follow jeremy and figure out what this deal is he has made with the dark man so i mean things have gotten Things have got this case has gone in a different direction than Karen B was expecting, but it appears that Emily so far has not experienced any of that. So he's just going to have to go on his own to work out what's happening. And he's figuring that the reason that they can't find Jeremy in Dorsetto is because he's yes, adjust that tie is that uh, Jeremy's no longer in Dorsetto and that he has used magic to travel somewhere else and Carnby's going to have to try to follow him. Well, chapter one is completed. We've begun chapter two. And uh, this seems like probably a good time to take a break. As we continue on with Carnby and Emily's new adventure in Dorsetto, the uh, much more populated Dorsetto. But we've encountered some monsters. We have not encountered anything like, uh, I don't know, ashtrays that kill us with smoke. Or, like, ghostly women that turn into, like, rotating orbs that kill you upon touching you somehow. We haven't encountered anything like that. Uh, just some zombie, ki zombie kind of monsters. Pretty sure that, like I said, I'm pretty sure that one section was supposed to be much more stealthy. I just ended up running through everyone. It's probably not how you're supposed to handle that. We'll continue on with Alone in the Dark.